Welcome into Jets Nation Radio. I'm your host, Angus Hout, and across from me is Sam Brownell. How's it going, buddy? Oh, not so bad yourself. Uh, living the dream, man. Got to <laughs> shovel 22 centimeters of snow off of rich people's driveways, and I... You know what? If you build a driveway with anything other than concrete, you're you're an awful human being and uh, you should be shoveling your own driveway. I don't care how much you make. If you're making so much that you can put stone in your driveway, you should be able to put down some like heating Just charge pads. more. Just charge more. Yeah, that's what I was feeling. Like I wiped out on one guy's property. I was just like, I, at least I'm making $30 an hour. That's what I was telling myself. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing great. The Jets, I mean, still in the top three in the Central Division. We are briefly on top. Life, life is good as a Jets fan, and yeah, and last... as a Bombers fan too, and a Vikings fan. Eight and yeah. one, baby. Eight and one, great. Not a stressful game at all today. Nah, uh, but yeah, no, the Jets are looking good. I mean, last night wasn't their best performance. Far from it. It was. It wasn't fantastic. Markstrom, I thought, played pretty well. Yeah, just the save <laughs> of the decade. No big that was deal. that was a pretty insane save. Yeah, and it's like that was simply the the save that turned the whole game around. It like the Jets were trying absolutely after that point, but uh, Markstrom just like nah. And I think that that's simply what changed the course of that game for the Jets. They couldn't get anything going in the third. I don't know, just a rough game for the Jets all around, but like not in a bad way, you know. Yeah, yeah, it it could have been a lot worse. Um, yeah, it's kind of the perfect storm. The Jets are on fire going into the game. Calgary's ice cold, and that's just what the Jets do best. Yeah, they, they end streaks one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a rough streak to watch end right in front of our eyes. But I mean, whatever. Calgary was working their tails off all game. Like they. they... They Absolutely. know that they're way better than what they were playing as, and they shouldn't have been losing all those games. Uh, absolutely. I think there were, like, it was it was a matter of time until they kind of got back on track, and we'll see if they if they are back on track. But I, I think I think this win will kind of steer the ship in the right direction. Um, again, you hate to have it against your own team, but sometimes those just happen. Yeah. Now let's do the opposite to Seattle tonight, who's been kind of on fire. Yeah, they've been on fire like all season long. It's uh I don't know if Seattle's one of those teams that's like they're going to be super hot before American Thanksgiving and then they fall off the tracks or what happens, but uh go Seattle for showing up in the second year. Not tonight, but other than that, yeah, good on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like you can blow it now. I don't care after that. But uh yeah, tonight, um, please lose the game. <laughs> um yeah, we'll talk uh we'll talk a little bit more about this game uh in a few minutes here. But uh what was the best Jets accusation accus who is the best pickup in the summer for the Jets? I mean, there it was a good summer for depth. Yeah. I think we've we we all know that. Um I could tell you who the worst might be. David Riddich. <laughs> Whoa. Are we still hating on David Riddich? No, 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 no. He's a, I mean, he's, he's only played two games. I'm yeah, just, like just settle down. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, But I mean, you look at them. Gagne has been good. He's been solid. Menelainen has been unreal. Finally got his first goal the other day, but he's just big plays hard. Yeah. And Jansen Fialbi. What a pickup off waivers. Yeah. Who would have What thought? a guess. Yeah, like it, we are rolling into the, the the season itself and it's just like, hey, wait a second. We have Sam Gagne, who was picked up like two weeks before the preseason started, and Axel Fialve. And you're just like, wait, a, who are these guys? And like, are we really going to be running it back this poorly? Like we've lost well, Fetch well, and Stass and we're, we're, we're lost. Yeah, and I mean like Menelain and no one had ever heard of him. No one thought he was making the team out of camp. And then he just was a stud during camp. Yeah, and he's looked good pretty much every game. I mean, last night, just the case of stone hands out of nowhere where he just, like, has the puck on a stick breaking down the ice. and then He just... pushed it a little too far ahead of himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, I mean, you can't win them all. I guess that's all we can sure. say. Because, I mean, if Madeline gets that one, Jets probably look a thousand times better than last night. And the big... Markstrom save. I'm still upset about that, but I'm still impressed. I mean, just the the... Like, full like when oh it was when nuts. was the last time like that was seen in the nhl like it feels like it's been a it's been a I decade don't know. 
it doesn't get pulled out that often. That's for no, sure. But I like I love like the the Dominic Hassocks of the world that are just like I'm just out here to play hockey and just, just play the puck. Yeah, I think it's uh it doesn't it's a technique that doesn't work, but damn it, uh, or it doesn't look like it should work, but it works. Damn it. Um, speaking of Markstrom, did you see his reverse retro setup? Sick, super sick. Like Nasty. I don't love giving credit to the Flames and like Nasty. I don't love their jersey. I, I like I don't get it. I yeah, know, their, like, their their last reverse retro was better. The Blasty yeah. one Give us was Blasty. much better. Yeah, but they they like ironically hated this or they they hated this jersey and then they ironically loved it and now it's the reverse retro. It's like okay, Calgary, we get it. It's a joke. Can I know. I love. Again? I love those Blasty. No, the current ones aren't Blasty. No, I know the the, the, the oh, new yeah. ones are the reverse retros um, that they hated. I mean, speaking they... of Blasty, I had a friend who thought that was a dragon. What? And we're all like, <laughs> idiot! It's a horse, and he's like, horses don't breathe fire, and it's like it's a it's a fire breathing <laughs> horse. About? I can't remember exactly which friend it was, but if you're listening to this, you're an idiot. Yeah, you're a fool. Um, actually, I had to explain <laughs> the difference between uh, Super Bowl and Grey Cup to my girl this afternoon because she was asking about the bombers. I was like, oh no, <laughs> I thought that was common knowledge, but uh, that's okay. We still appreciate her and everything she does. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, Matt Alina is probably like. I, uh, yeah, Matt Alliance has been my favorite pickup so far. Like, it just he looks good. Uh, and I mean, Fialvi, I, I don't know if you could find a better waiver wire pickup. That, ever. yeah, like, that was like, unbelievable. Yeah, it would just, it's a gift, really. It's like the hockey gods are like, hey, we're sorry about Bufflin. Here's a little bit of a repayment. <laughs> oh, he's so quick. But that brings us to another question I know you had. Uh, we'll just transition into that. Who comes out of the lineup? Uh, Right. And like, I kind of talked about this last week when I did the podcast by myself and it's like, I don't know, because you pull, it's probably going to be Harkins, but. Well, well, okay. So the first person that comes out, Harkins is out of the lineup tonight against Seattle. Yeah. Uh, Ice Monson. Um, so like the first guy that comes out, it's easy. It's Ice Mon- Harkins or Toninato, whichever one's playing, yeah. but yeah. Baron's going to be coming back too eventually. Yeah. And like so four that's... more weeks. Yeah, I guess. So when Ehlers comes back, that's the the easy choice. But Ehlers might still be like, we have no idea what's going on there. So Well, the guy keeps hopping be... on a plane with the team and then doesn't He's play. He's not with the team this week. I thought he traveled with the team. No? No, no. He stayed home this week. They're hoping to get him skating Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, so Nikolai He went, he went on the like LA Vegas trip, but probably just a... You know, I, team bond and stuff. I thought that he, uh, I thought he was on the trip with this one. I, for some reason, thought I saw a photo of him, but uh, no, I think they're back home after tonight. So, yeah, they should be. Not uh, yeah, worth it's it like for the back to back. Yeah. So, I, it's uh, right now it's Harkins, but like you're going to have to send Harkins back down to the minors. Harkins is still uh, a waiver guy. Like, uh, but he was an emergency recall. Did, so, does he have to go through waivers? I don't know what the. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know what we the need protocol is. We need uh, we need a lawyer on retainer. If uh, somebody could sponsor us for that, we would love to know so they can go through the uh, handbook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's only three thousand dollars. We don't get paid for this, but we're gonna get a lawyer on retainer. <laughs> Just three thousand dollars a month. I promise you, it'll be worth it for the one time that we need you to be on retainer. So, yeah, <laughs> quick three grand. It's all we need. That's uh, it. Yeah, just feel free to message us. We'll uh, we'll hook everything up and make sure that we have a good lawyer. Um, so let's just assume that we have to send Harkins down via waiver wire. Like that's a that's a tricky situation because he's one of the best. Yeah, like you're probably you're probably gonna lose Harkins. Like I'm okay with losing Toninato. It would suck. I like Toninato, but not the end of the world. I don't love the idea of losing Harkins. Yeah, well, that's another guy that you drafted gotten up to the point where he can do it and then it's like oh cool we lost um yeah i mean and good for um kovacevic how, how he's playing over in montreal oh yeah the dude's crushing i saw his fancy numbers this morning it's like oh like he had it in him but uh we had to bring in a couple other guys for some well, we know why we had to bring a couple other guys in last season, but yeah, still sucks. I still don't understand the Copa Bianco thing. Yeah, 
I'm still confused because like he's a steady seventh defenseman, but it's like maybe we could have had like seven really cool defensemen and we could have been wheeling five and six out of the lineup every night and just had, I don't know, just a little bit more flow to it, a different flow to it, but I'm not the GM. I'm not the guy that's paying everyone. So I have no real say. I'm just a goober in my porch. Okay, wait, quickly. Yes. Uh, when a player is waiver eligible and recalled to the NHL by a standard recall, they do not need waivers to go back to the AHL. They do not need waivers. If they play fewer than 10 cumulative games. Okay. Or when a player is on an emergency recall, the same 10 games slash 30 day rule applies. But those games and days counters are separate from the games and days accumulated when the players on a standard recall. I don't, I made myself more confused. So I think from what I've understood is if the player plays less than 10 NHL games or is in the NHL for fewer than 30 days, they do not have to go through the waiver wire, thus going back down to the AHL. Yeah, but, but it sounds like even a regular recall, it's the same, but the days like add up different or something. I don't know. Yeah, so it's probably a little bit of a technicality, but long and short is he has he it's 10 games or less or 30 days or less. Yeah. Just to keep it simple cuz we don't that we'll keep it to lame uh, 10 games in a row. 10 game 10 consecutive games. Okay. Yeah. Well, that should be easy. You get Tony Nato in there and everyone else uh, like yeah. It, yeah. But easy. but still you got that 30 days. Oh yeah, you got the 30 days. So They'll yeah. figure it out. They'll, I'm yeah. sure that I, I'm sure they know what they're doing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, there's somebody that has something better than cat friendly than us. Oh, damn. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's okay. So we don't lose that. Like hypothetically, we get Ehlers back. So do you briefly send one of those guys down and then bring them back? Yeah. Up oh, you first stuff? Send one of them down. Well, I think Ice Mont's the first one, unless there's a waiver issue and then you, you send whoever needs to go now to clear waivers or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think the like the lineup that we had opening day is ultimately what you want to get back to. Other than Janssen Fialbi might ha, might be in there instead of I I, I like I, I don't even know who he replaces Gagne. Yeah, and it's like I, I think that's what it comes down to is Gagne might be the odd man out, although he's like he's a sweet Swiss Army knife with the Jets. Yeah, I, I, I like what he's brought to this team, but I don't think he's the guy. I think he's ultimately your sacrifice, sacrificial lamb when it comes down to uh, the trade deadline. It's like you know you can if you can get six goals out of Sam Gagne before that point, you're gonna get he's a good trade option. Yeah, but if you're if you're going on a run, I don't think you're going to trade that guy. Like you got him for nothing. If he walks in in free agency, it's not the end of the world. I'm curious. Um, is Janssen Fialbi a RFA? That's a good question. I've been uh, been meaning to go look at all the Jets uh, contracts here. So we will I'm pulling it up right now because oh, I okay. like he's young. Yeah, actually, he's expecting a kid. Uh, he's like halfway through expecting. Oh, cool. Yeah. My um, partner and I were creeping through everybody's uh, personal lives the other night and we found out it. that he's expecting. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, So he is an RFA after this year. So, I mean, that's a, that's a nice waiver claim. Yeah. That's a huge waiver claim. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's let, like, we get to, let's just say March. Are you trying to mm-hmm. extend him then? Or are you just waiting until contract expires i think that's a guy you wait till the end of the season i mean unless he wants to sign like a three-year one mil yeah. or something yeah. um i think you just wait till the off season because he's an rfa i guess the thing you do risk there is um what's it called arbitration yeah. where he could get a bit more than you're hoping to pay him or you pull a Comrie or uh, who, no, who was it this year? The Jets didn't tender a qualifying offer to, so they didn't go to, they Pierre became Luke. a UFA. Svetch. Okay. Okay. I thought you were talking about Pierre-Luc Dubois there. 
no, 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 no. So, like, because Svetch was an RFA last year, yeah. but the Jets didn't tender a qualifying offer to him by the deadline. So, I think because they didn't want him to go to arbitration and get more than they were willing to pay him. Um. So yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see what they do there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens because, like, yeah, there's a couple of these guys who've got the one year contracts. I think Manalainen's in the same boat. He's Donnie, a UFA. He's a UFA. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, who else do we got that are Manalainen's 28? Yeah, he had a, like surprised a, me a little bit. He's uh he I can't remember what what year he was drafted. I guess in the 2012 uh whatever. Either way, uh he played like 36 <laughs> games with the uh with the Hurricanes. And then just was yeah, like Yeah, he was drafted 2013. 2013 by Nashville. By Nashville. Yeah. Then, then he yeah, he played a few games 2018-19 with the Hurricanes, 34 games, 4 and 4. Nine playoff games, one assist. So, so yeah, I mean, clutch, clutch playoff guy too. So, like the Jets, we're feeling good. <laughs> I mean, I've seen worse teams. <laughs> we we really have seen worse teams out of this club, and I mean, if they don't fall off the boat or off the off their tracks, we're fine. Uh, it's I think really we're gonna see who this team really is uh, from. American Thanksgiving on to like mid December. And that's where we'll really know if yeah. we're legit, legit, or if we're just like, well, it's just like last year. Yeah. I, I mean, the Jets had a pretty good start last year, too, though, didn't they? Yeah. They, ha- they were nine, three, and three on November 15th, 2021. Yeah. So we're getting right to the same time of year. It's a fairly similar record, even a little worse. Yeah. So. And, As, uh, like you got to keep it on the tracks. You got to get Ehlers and Baron healthy. Um, actually, so uh, actually going back to that uh, stat that I just kind of threw at you there. Uh, the first game that they lost after that was against the Calgary Flames, much like this year too. So it's don't like, say that. I listen, man. I'm looking at don't, the records here and I'm don't nervous. say that. No, nope, no, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. It's different. Connor different. Hellebuck is playing like 2018 Connor Hellebuck. Unbelievable. Uh, Kyle Connor will score at least eventually. a goal sometime soon. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just, I'm frustrated because like Kyle Connor was the cornerstone of my hockey draft. And I'm just like, Kyle Connor, please. Thank God for Josh Morrissey <laughs> keeping things afloat. But uh, who? He'll, he'll get it eventually. Just a bit of a cold start. He's still getting some assists. Yeah, he's picking up points. It's just like, I, I want the goals. Like, he was looking so hot, too, when he wasn't He was supposed scoring. to have, like, eight or nine goals by now. Yeah, at least. At least. And <laughs> haven't seen it. Like, he's shooting at, like, a three and a half percent at this point. Like, it's That's outrageous. Bad. And it's, like, it's not even his fault. Like, the guy's been shooting and he's been trying. I just don't get it. So The, the power play's not really set up for him to score. No. No, and he doesn't. Because, like, any score. pass he's getting, he... His shot isn't quite there for that, like, power it through the goalie. Yeah. Um, And any passes he's getting are either super predictable or they take too long to get to him by the time he's shooting. Mm-hmm. Or it's, like, down from the top, from the blue line down to him, and it's the goalie doesn't have to move that much, so he squares up before Connor's even shooting. So it's just our power play is so bad. It's brutal without Nick Ehlers. And it's just like, it's only the defenders that are able to score on the power play. And I mean, they were minus one yesterday on the power play with zero shots on three chances. Okay. Yeah. Like that was Trevor Lewis. Legend Trevor Lewis. That's legend Trevor Lewis. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, no, it's like, that was unacceptable to watch three power plays where you had a minute and 20 of five on three power play time. That's it. That's the worst part of it. I Zero. almost forgot about that. Zero shots, and Trevor Lewis scores on us. Well, no, we could argue. It's like, well, maybe the ref should have given us a, like, you should definitely get a shot on with the five on three, but I wanted my penalty shot. Like, the way that Uyghur held Connor there, it's like, yeah, just give me my shot, please. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted a Connor goal. <laughs> I wanted my Connor goal, yes, because I'm selfish, but at the same time, like, he, I don't know. I thought he was definitely close enough to being on a penalty shot. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, yeah, 
I don't know. I was pretty just annoyed with uh, Calgary's commentators. Like, I know Rick Ball just got back from cancer treatment, but I was just like, holy homers, like, take her easy. I I wasn't, I had the game kind of low, wasn't listening to the commentators. Oh, that's much, fair. But... I wish I didn't because I uh, just was like, I, this is why I don't like Flames fans. Well, it, it wasn't the Flames guys, was it? I thought it, it was Sportsnet, so it was uh, National. Yeah, no, but it was the Calgary guys for Sportsnet. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So Rick Ball, who's doing his Calgary thing, and it's like, he just got back from cancer treatment. So just like, ooh, this is, I want to be critical, but at the same time, please take it down at least three notches. I don't want to hear how good the Calgary Flames are, or the fact that Pierre-Luc Dubois wasn't slew-footed. Like, Oh my God. Well, not only that, how does Dubois get a holding penalty on that play? Yeah, right? Like, What? And yeah. then the I also saw Flames fans bitching about the Markstrom penalty on Dubois, where he fully Dubois shot the puck into the corner. Yeah. Nowhere near Markstrom. Yeah. He gets shoved towards him and Markstrom fully kicks out his leg. Yeah. And it's just like, really? We're not gonna call anything else on this? Like it just Well, they did get, call the Markstrom penalty there. Yeah, but I mean that was such a dangerous play. Like yeah, I mean, right guys to... going could have gone head first into the boards. Wasn't fantastic. It was just yeah, I hate. Yeah. I miss Dennis. <laughs> right? Oh man, Dennis would have been fired up for that one. Dennis was just the best. He was. Try my best with Dan Robertson. Since you've pointed out some stuff to me, and my partner's he pointed some stuff out to me, gets names wrong too he much. Does yeah, he my partner never. He always calls Appleton Wheeler Wheeler Appleton. Oh. Sometimes he calls Wheeler Toninato. It's like, dude, come on. You're in the building. I'm watching on my laptop and I can see that you're saying the wrong name. Right. Uh, they called uh, Adam Laurie Kyle Laurie last night. So that was kind of fun. I mean, he's a very talented guy. He is. I don't know if he's NBA all-star level, but. He'll get there. If he trains hard yeah, enough. Give him some time. With I mean, he is 6'5". He's got the height. Yeah, he's got the height. He's probably, he's a thick boy too. As long as he can keep the cardio up. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's uh that's yeah, we're gonna be pushing for Adam Adam Lowry's new career within the basketball team uh, that Winnipeg's getting next season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's all I know. About I wonder it. where uh, I'm assuming they're playing out of the U of M. Um that or my guess is probably the RBC Convention Center. There's no you could put a court in there. Yeah, but there's no stands or anything. I would think U of M or U of W. They both have fairly large gyms. A, okay. I I my my best guess would be U of M. I think U of W the location's better because it's downtown, but also parking's a bit of a nightmare. And yeah. Yeah. I, I would think they're playing out of U of M. Yeah, you're, you know what? You're probably right. I had a different building in my mind when I thought of well, whatever I was thinking there. <laughs> uh, when I said RBC, I was thinking of a different stadium. My bad. Uh, yeah, you're definitely right. It's going to be U of M and U of W. But I think U so. Of, what's the one on the south side of um, Pamina? That's U of, U of M. M. Yeah, so the, I, my yeah. guess is U of M. Yeah, Maybe. they they have, a, they have a massive gym. Or my yeah. other guess is what? A, oh, no, they don't have any stands there either. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> Adam Lowry, you're going to be playing in the new basketball league. Have fun. <laughs> You've been volunteered. Yeah, I've told everyone that that's what's happening. Uh, you do lose your contract, though. I'm sorry. And probably the captaincy with the Jets in a few years. Um, have you seen the mustaches of uh, the boys? Some of them, yeah. Some of them, yeah. Is Dylan's there any... is coming in. Dylan's... Uh, DeMello's. DeMello's, like, just DeMello's is solid. Like, you can just see those Italian roots right through that mustache. It's fantastic. And Lowry uh, always has has just a great mustache. He does. It's like it's a little bit thin. Like the hair doesn't grow through because I think it's a little bit blonde. But he's got the upper lip for it. So I like I want to see what Adam Lowry looks like, or what would he look like with a mustache for like four or five months? Like it'd be a thick gnarly oh, mustache. Yeah, <laughs> would love it. Uh, you are doing Movember, as we can see. Yes. Um. Yeah. So. I'm going to put it in the article that goes along with this podcast on where you can donate. So jetsnation.ca and uh, support Sam with uh, Movember. Yeah, I need to, I need to start promoting it better because I've been, I've been busy. So I've kind of been slacking. I put up one Facebook post and it got 
like two likes Woo! and one was my sister and no one donated so i need to i need to get on it so the the last couple of weeks in november i might be a little insufferable on social media that's fair it's for a good it's, cause though it's for a great cause yeah. and i mean you just look so handsome with your mustache so thanks bud yes uh so yeah go go support sam jetsnation.ca uh that would just be fantastic uh Sam, we the NHL is talking about doing the World Cup of Hockey 2025. Yes. I was a big fan when they did the World Cup last time. What was I, that? 2016, 17, Jeez. 2017. I guess Shifley was on the. Or was it 16? Was it Shifley was on North America? Was he that young? No, he would have been Team Canada at that point. I think point. he was on North America. Uh, No, no, because you had to be 20. What was it? Was it 25? 23 i think or maybe it was ryan nugent hopkins was on that team i believe and i think shifley was on the team i think you're right now that i'm starting to put stuff together david was the captain yes which he is was. hilarious because he would have been one of the younger guys yeah just a baby out there but honor I mean, hellebuck was on the team team usa yeah no on north america oh yeah right 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 um McKinnon, Nude, Shifley, yep. Yeah. Wow, That's... Vincent Trocheck. Brandon Sod was young enough to be on the team. Right? That's bizarre. Nuts. Like, I can't, like, I, I miss the fact that we have not had a tournament, an international tournament of hockey, a proper one, in that long. Like, yeah. Like... Yeah, I, I, I miss it. Like and, and like the reason they pushed it back from 2024 to 2025 is because they said they don't have enough time to do it. They planned a whole pandemic. It's a year month, and a half, right? You should be able to plan just about anything. In- Wait, why were they doing it in February? And that's also like, is it for the Olympics? That would be instead my only of guess. the Olympics because there there should there's supposed to be an Olympics in 2024, right? Yeah, I think it's in- it'll be winter. Is that one in no that uh is that in Korea no. again? No. no. No, winter, there was a winter that... Olympics this year. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> Is there a winter Olympics this year? No, there was. Oh, there like was. 2022. There definitely was. <laughs> yeah, so we missed, right, the whole pandemic messed everything up. Okay, so we lost out on this year's, on this year's Olympics, and it's just like, why can't we just get a hockey tournament going? Like, John Scott can get a hockey tournament going. And I mean, like he is an engineer and a podcaster. John Scott, the big guy that uh, I know, I know who John team. Scott is. He did a hockey tournament. Yeah, uh, the Beauty League. He's responsible for that. Oh, he! I didn't know that was him. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if it's all him, but he's partially responsible for the Beauty League, okay. and it's called the John Scott Cup. Um, that's sick. It's awesome. I love it. It's just a big old beer keg. But um, if John Scott can do that, and I mean, like. Not no knocks against John Scott, but why can't the league, which has, you know, people that are making really good money, why can't they make something like that happen? It should be it should be done in a matter of weeks, I would think. Because I don't know, all they care about is the regular season. Yeah, I think like Price getting injured in 2014 at the Olympics was bad because now the NHL is super super cautious about that stuff. But I mean, the like major league base, uh, uh, basketball, do they go to the Olympics? Uh, it's not during their season though. Okay. But can, you can still get hurt long enough for your team to. True. So that is true. And I mean, like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm still mad about it. What about I, I do. I, I want hockey back in the Olympics or at very least a world cup. Cause yeah. the world cup was kind of the NHL's response to, to not allowing players go to to go to the Olympics. Yeah. And then it's like, we've missed out on how many of these, like, you know, COVID aside, we should have got one in 20, oh, I guess 2020 wouldn't have happened, but we 2018 could have and 2022. Yeah. We could have easy, but nope. Screw you guys. And it's like the K lets their players go. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they get to win Olympic medals. I want my Canadian Olympic medal for hockey again. Like, I just once want to see Crosby, McKinnon, McDavid on a line. Right? You know, Brad Marchand and Crosby on a line again. I want to see it. Yeah, Mark Shifley on McDavid's wing. Oh, it Give would me that. be dirty. And like, 
or like really have some. Not fun that with Shifley him. would be on the top line. No, but he'd no, be no. on the team, especially okay. after the year he's having. Let's just say hypothetically, World Cup comes 2025. Could we get two Canadian teams, like Canadian A, Canadian B? Like, yeah, but they wouldn't win. I I don't care about that. It's a World Cup I of do. hockey. It's I a, care about it. That that in that in my opinion, unless no, you are I want to beat it, Russia. No, it's Team NA that can uh, win Russia. No, but I I like the way they did it with Team North America yeah, and I Team love- Europe, so it made it a little more competitive. Yeah, and I mean, um, no, I, I I don't think like Perfetti would be on Team North America. He would. He'd be sick. And I mean, like, who else would be on that? I'm just running through names. Um, oh, Owen Power. We could see Owen Power and Cole Perfetti once again. Yeah, get some redemption because we only got to see it for two games. Yeah, and it's like we'll never see that again. So, yeah, it needs until to Owen Power demands a trade from Buffalo to Winnipeg. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, somebody's going to demand to come to Winnipeg for once. They're going to be like, you know what I want to do? Well, I mean, it is Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, it's... Their football team can't even win a game. (laughs) Ooh, those shots at the Bills. Although they are getting a beautiful stadium finally, so go Bills fans. (laughs) Yeah, they've been dealing without that for a long while. But I don't know, that'd be a sick... That's going to be one of my wishes from now on is an Owen Power trade to Winnipeg. (laughs) Just a dream. Just a dream. I just want to see... But the kid can dream. yeah. Kid can dream. Um, how many games does Billy Hanela play with the Winnipeg Jets? Uh, ever? Like yes. again? Is he ever going to get to play again? Probably not. After he's got his agent to trash the organization. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's a very, if guys get hurt. If like I, I would love to see Villy up and get him a couple of games. There's also been talks about a potential trade, a defenseman going from Winnipeg to Ottawa, uh, recently. So that could open up a door for Villy if like a uh, Schmidt, or I. The two names I've heard are Schmidt and Demello. I don't know that yeah, if there's, there's any truth there, but there's a lot of people trying to run Demello out of town, and I'm very confused about it. Like Demello has, he's, good. I, he's looked good, and he's just like. He's a steady, good defenseman. Like there, he's a defensive defenseman, which yeah. the Jets need more of sometimes. Which, yeah, and I mean, like Schmidt, he's he's Nate Schmidt. I mean, who's gonna take that contract? I'll be anyway? so sad if Schmidt. Well, it's only this year, next year, right? I guess so. I'll be sh- I'll be sad if Schmidt goes. I like Nate Schmidt. Such like, a happy guy. He is a happy guy, but I mean, like if you can get a forward that you desperately need for your top end in case Nick Ehlers goes down again. Yeah, yeah, the Jets' top six is pretty thin. Yeah, yeah, and it's like Appleton's done a fine job. Like, I don't want to rag on him at all. Like, he's like, just—he's not he, a top six player. No, he's just not good enough. Simply put, I mean, it, yeah, there, it's, there's... the Jets have a very good top six when everyone's healthy. Mm-hmm. But if not everyone's healthy, you're in trouble. Yeah. And it's just, it, it falls apart real quick once you remove one of those Jenga pieces. And yeah, especially with need, the, uh, need healers back huge. Yeah. So like every game without him, like it's the jets still look fine and they're going to look amazing once he's back, but it's not as good as it should be. And the losses hurt so much more without healers. Yeah. Not, not that there's been many of them, but there it feels like <laughs> no, but it feels like those losses could have been negated with Nikolai Ehlers. Yeah, you just add, I mean, he's such a dynamic player that you add that into the lineup and it's it's a huge bonus. You have a guy that can, I don't know, skate the puck into the opponent's end when you're on the power play instead of just flicking the puck into the corner and having them ice it back and then doing that three or four times until your guys get tired and then have to come off the ice and your power play sucks. Yeah. Which I mean, like, holy Calgary last night, just flipping the puck back and forth, like just icing, like the last 10 minutes of the third period, ice, 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 ice. As is like, I hate this so much. Like, we get it. You're going to (laughs) win. It's just boring hockey. It's boring hockey, but it's like, yeah. Daryl Sutter loves it. But I mean, once you lock it down and that's what, that's what killed the Jets. The the Flames locked it down. Yeah. It just, Yeah. Get and I mean, when, when you have a team that locks it down like that, you need a guy like Ehlers who can who sneak by is 
it's yeah, it's just shifty. Yeah. And I mean, like I watched Blake Wheeler try to do it last night and you can see like 36 years old flying in like Superman, but it's just not as fast. Just doesn't have the same step he had. No, nope. I don't know, five, six years ago. <laughs> so heartbreaker. It is what it is. Like we just, uh, yeah, the team's just so close to being fat, like over the moon. Great. It's just, we're, we're waiting on Nikki Ehlers and our boy, Morgan Barron get better soon, but uh, that's that's all we can really say about them Jets. Uh, where the game probably started about ten minutes ago. Where is your score prediction? Uh, well, let's see. Has there been a score yet? No. Uh, so I've got it on my phone. We got five minutes into the first period. Shots are two one for Seattle. We're gonna lose two one for Seattle in shots. We're in trouble, man. Done. <laughs> uh, score prediction: three one Jets. Shife gets one, Connor gets one, Dubois keeps his streak going. Uh, or Shife Dubois and Lowry shorthanded. Wow. <laughs> I love the shorties from uh Yeah. From uh, good old Adam go Lowry. Home. Right? Yeah. The big man can definitely go do it. Like we're gonna believe in six shorthanded goals from Adam Lowry this year. I mean, he's, he has two. He's on pace for way more than six. Oh, yeah. But I mean, like, you, you got to go a little bit reasonably down. If I could find an actual no, stat aim line for, for it. Aim for the moon. Aim for aim for the moon. And then just go out and be with the stars. So, let, okay, fine. We'll guess uh, We'll guess a good 23 <laughs> shorthanded goals for Adam Larry. 23. <laughs> he's gonna break the record for shorties in a year but also break his own personal record for goals i mean the guy somehow figured out how to score remember all those breakaways he had the last few years that he just like couldn't tuck yeah he's got Finally it now. doing it yeah and figured it looks something like out. yeah and then just uh good old trevor lewis just copying the same move and just running through connor hellebuck oh, yeah yeah <laughs> Jets are going to be good. Uh, we've got two, three games between now and next Sunday. <clears throat> so, well, not including the, did I say three? I said three, three. I meant two. We, we got, got the two. Ducks and we got the Pens. So two birds. What are we, yeah. how are we doing? Okay. So tonight we're winning. We got that. Yes. Uh, ducks. It's Timu night and uh, Teppo Newmanen. Yes. They're getting inducted into the Jets Hall of Fame. Reverse retros. Jets are winning that one. Ducks are terrible. They are. But also, that would be the night to blow it right in front of. I'm sorry. Not happening. Uh, Penguins, it'll be a good game. But I think the Jets win that one like 2-1 in a in overtime. Maybe. It's going to be real tight. Yeah. Yeah, the Pans. The, the in- Ducks game, I think, is, is uh, like... Five two or something. Five two. Jets just on it. All right. Kyle I can Connor buy with gets all a hattie. That. Kyle Connor gets a hattie. Does he do the old uh chuck the glove and uh, oh that would be sick. Right? Just give it right back up to and give the point up there. Oh. That'd be pretty sick. I'd pee my pants just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sam. You have a great oh. week. Uh tell your friend. Oh, you know what? Let's uh finish this up properly. What are your social medias? <laughs> uh, S Brownell 12 on Twitter and Sam Brownell radio on Instagram. All right. Uh, make sure you check out jetsnation.ca. You can give Jets Nation a follow on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Give me a follow. Angus out at, well, Angus out on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, have a great week, Sam. Peace and grace and be good and do good.